Have you ever digitized and embroidered a big design? Now I'm talking a really big design, 13 inches, 100,000 stitches, looks great on the screen, but you throw it on the machine and all kinds of bad things happen. You have puckering, you have misregistration, and you're kind of scratching your head wondering why. Well, if that's happened to you, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned and watch this video. Before we get started, this is a little bit of a sad day, and the reason why is we just wrapped up an entire year of doing events all over the country. We actually went to Australia, New Zealand, all across the US, and we had a great time. And for those of you who got a chance to come to one of our hands-on events, it was wonderful meeting you, and we really appreciate it. We hope you learned a lot. Now you might notice that this shirt that I'm wearing is my shrunken head pineapple shirt and this shirt has literally been with me on the road for probably about five years and I use it as an example because I tell people embroidery should always be soft and you should actually be able to feel the design and it should not be stiff and hard it should feel like part of the shirt and no matter how long you own the shirt the embroidery should always look good. After you wash it, you give it an iron, it should look as good as the day you first embroidered it. And the key is how it's digitized. Now, it's a sad day because after five years on the road, this shirt is actually starting to give way. It's actually coming apart at the seams here, and this shirt is officially going into retirement. So that's the sad part of it. The good part of it is 2020 is just around the corner and we have some incredible things planned, great learning opportunities, so you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna continue to keep your eye open for that. But this design that we're gonna look into, and you can see it right here on screen, is a design that was actually sent into uh, us on one of our Facebook groups, and you can see that it's a big design, 13 inches wide, there's almost 100,000 stitches, and the person who submitted it was wondering why there is all this gapping in the design, and you can see pieces popping out here, and I right away asked them to send me the file, because usually in a design this size, when you have misregistration and things not lining up like this, it's 99% of the time the digitizing because you're obviously going to hoop something this size so it's not that you're floating it on top of stabilizer it's actually hooped within the hoop but you have all of these problems which means that there's a lot of pull and push there's just a lot of stitches that are distorting the material and causing this movement now once I got the file I looked at it and I, I replied back this is just way too long to try to verbally tell you the things that are, are wrong in this design we actually uh, need to look at the file and explain why it is visually, and that's what we're gonna do in this video, but I also re-digitize the file from scratch. Because, you know, if a picture is worth a thousand words, a design file is worth, you know, a thousand, hundred thousand stitches, you can actually see why things happen if you can get to the actual design file and see how it was digitized, see how the person actually creating it can tell you if they knew what they were doing or if they didn't, it can tell one of two stories. So we're going to dive into this file, take a look at the original, and I'll quickly go over some of the things that I didn't like, and then I'll quickly show you the file that I recreated, and I'll show you the results in a stitch out, and you'll kind of see why digitizing is the foundation of any design. Now in the same way that I said I could have written a book based on this design, I could have done a two hour video on it as well. So to save time, we're gonna kinda of do a fast redraw and go through our player. And I'm gonna show you some of the things that I didn't quite understand with how this design was digitized. Now the first thing is if I look at the underlay, it's actually outlining the entire scroll part of the design. And it's doing all of the underlay with a kind of a, a underlay here that is following the same direction as the fill that's going to be placed and there you can see it going down the same direction in reality the underlay should go the opposite direction and you really don't need any of this outline around the banner or the scroll at this point so that's the the first thing that I kind of saw that didn't make sense now 
it also did part of this design and then went to the other side and continued sewing and then came back. That really makes no sense with regards to theory whatsoever. This is done all as one gigantic unit and then it's trying to path its way through and leaving spaces between the two objects is going to definitely give it some issues. Now I'm not understanding exactly why it did the outside of the banner, but I'm assuming this might have been auto-digitized to a certain extent from the artwork. And this is, again, you know, manual digitizing, knowing how to path your designs properly, will always give you better results. Now we have other fills that are full density fills going on top of full density fills, which is going to create hard stitches and promote bulletproof embroidery. And then it does all of the detail in each of the, the guns, and then it's doing again full fills on top of full fills. And you're gonna, you know, undoubtedly create hard stitches. Then we have areas like this where the dog's being done, and I have full density here, and almost full, well, pretty much full density here, and then I have the fill stitch going all the way across again the same direction as the underlay that's being put down and that's not really a tatami or fill underlay that looks almost like a zigzag underlay that's being put down for a fill then as we get through the rest of this you can see it's now doing all of the fill areas uh, in this and it's leaving the white open so that you see the fabric show through and to be honest I'm not a huge fan of doing that you end up creating more penetrations in the design there's absolutely no underlay whatsoever in any part of this banner it's just basically going all the way through doing all of this with no underlay again doing one side and the other the fills are not really making sense how they're being laid down and then it's going and doing the black outlines around the guns. Now that should have been done way before all of these fill stitches were put down. Uh, this really should have been done in sections so that things were being completed as they move forward. So what you end up getting is a lot of misregistration. There's kind of a strange, that, that actually does look like a tatami fill going down for the satin stitches now. But when it gets all the way to this point here, and then it gets finally to the last color after doing all the outlines, there you have a white border going around this uh, banner and in reality, you should have done the banner, you know, at one time and outlined it right away to make sure that everything would line up. So to be honest, this design, um, it's kind of true to the artwork. It looks like the original artwork as far as on screen is concerned, but there's just so many, I guess, inconsistencies with the theory of how to digitize, especially with something that is 13 inches and 100,000 stitches. This is really just kind of a disaster waiting to happen. And that does explain a lot of that gapping and almost, uh, you know, hard stitches and that roller coaster effect where you can actually see it distorting the fabric. Now here's the design that I did and you'll see some of the differences right away. I actually have seven color changes in total in the design and the other design actually had 10 color changes and actually that's not usually normal. Usually for a large jacket back design, I will have more color changes to promote good registration, but the way this design worked, I was actually able to keep it down and still get good results. Now the other thing is, there's actually 93,000 stitches in my design, and there was almost 100,000 stitches in the other one, so I pretty much saved you know, close to 7,000 stitches uh, between the two. And that also is, you know, better results, better looking embroidery with less stitches. Now, if I do a, a fast redraw through this, you can see how I am going from one side to the other. My underlay is actually going the opposite direction of the fill stitch. And my first color just lays down the first colors in the design and the handle of the gun and part of the body. And then I'm doing fills that are not going on top of each other, but actually that are separated so it keeps the density down. And I'm doing all of the detail in each of the guns. And at this point here, we've pretty much completed all the fill stitches, a couple satin stitches where I could get away with it. And then we right away go in 
and I outline all of the details in both of the guns. So there really isn't that much movement at this point in the design with regards to the fill stitches for both sides. Sometimes uh, if there was any more detail than this, I might have actually broken it down into two different sections, meaning that each gun was treated independently. But I thought that I'd be able to get away with it in this case. And again, every design is different. Then after it does all of the detail or the satin stitches around each of the guns, then it's actually doing the fill stitch for the body of the dog. And again, my underlay is a tatami underlay with a fill stitch. And then right away, I'm outlining all the detail. So right at this point here, we have the main part of the entire design finished and outlined right away, each one done kind of independently to promote good registration. Then, right away after it finishes the outline of the dog, it goes into the fill, and if you can see, I'm going from one side across to the other, trying to keep a fairly consistent stitch flow as I move forward, and then once it does the uh, fill stitch, it right away outlines the fill stitch with a border, a satin border going around the fill. Then at the very end, instead of carving holes, I actually digitize the letters and this will give a much cleaner look to the design and if you want it to match the background of the fabric you just match the thread color to whatever the background of the the design is going to be and that way you're going to get good registration i made sure that i you know i did some zigzags in areas to promote uh, the lack of gapping because these are fairly long satin stitches but this design overall when it's done is actually done in a logical manner to promote good registration all the way through the design but as I always say the proof is in the stitching now here's the stitch file of the design that I created and you can see that all of the outlines around all of these fill stitches are actually lining up perfectly and if you look at the results in comparison to what was done before you can right away see all of the registration problems within the first design and how you can uh, see all that kind of little puckering and bubbling through the design up here in the top of the banner it's actually shifted uh, dramatically and things aren't lining up everywhere but in this design it's pretty much perfect so you can see that by digitizing a design with theory and knowing how to lay the stitches down flat what type of underlay to use and the mapping or the sequencing of how it's digitized has a huge effect on the quality of the outcome. I think the results are pretty clear on this one that it's all about the education. If you know how to lay a good foundation on a design no matter how big it is, you're always going to get better results. Hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. To make your embroidery life easier, hit the subscribe button below to be notified of new tips and tricks videos giveaways, and more. Plus, take advantage of our digitizer's cheat sheet and get a free embroidery design in the links below. The next step of your embroidery legacy starts here with ours. Mm -hmm.